12 learners. So in this video, I will show you how to calculate financial indicators. So this is common test June 2022. And this paper was written in Eastern Cape province. So guys, it's so easy to grab all these marks. So you just need to know your formulas and you will be given the formula sheet in, you know, in the, in the, in the back of your question paper, they will attach the formula sheet. So now let me take you through the required parts. So here we are required to calculate the following financial indicators for the year ended 30 April 2022. So 2.1.1, 2 .1 .1, 2 .1, calculate the debt equity ratio. So this is for three marks. So guys, as I've said, you just need to know your formulas. So the formula to calculate debt equity ratio is non-current liabilities. So those are long-term debts. So non-current liabilities is two shareholders equity. Shareholders equity. Then we're gonna check if we are given these balances in the additional information. So we've got additional information A. So this is an extract of the statement of comprehensive income. So this is the income statement extract. So we know that uh, liabilities and equity accounts are disclosed in the statement of financial position, the balance sheet. So here is an extract from the statement of financial position, which is the balance sheet. So now in this extract, we're gonna search or we're gonna look out for two balances. So we're gonna look out for non-current liabilities balance for April 2022. So this is non-current. So here we have non-current liabilities balance, 1 million and 80,000. And guys, this is for April 2022. And then shareholders equity balance is 10 million seven hundred and seventy six thousand four hundred. So now we have the balance for non-current liabilities, one million and eighty thousand. So divide this by shareholders equity balance, which is ten million seven hundred and seventy six four hundred. And then we're gonna use the calculator. So one million and eighty thousand divided by ten million. 776400. So this gives us 0 0.10. So we're going to round it to one decimal. So this will be 0 0.1 is to one. So we're going to write our answer on this side. So the answer is uh, 0 0.1 is to one. So guys, by doing this, you have earned yourself three marks. So there is nothing complicated here. So you just need to know the formulas. And then the next part of required, they want us to calculate, so that is 2.1.2. They want us to calculate earnings per share, that is EPS. And this is for four marks. So the formula for EPS, earnings per share formula, we take the profit after tax, Divided by number of ordinary shares. Number of ordinary shares. Then we multiply by 100. So guys, we're gonna put the division line here. So there is a division line here. So the formula is profit after tax divided by number of ordinary shares multiplied by 100 so that we get the number of cents because there are 100 cents in, in a rand. So that is why we multiply by 100. Then we know that the profit after tax, we're going to find that figure in the income statement. So we go to the extracts of income statement. So here is the statement of comprehensive income extract. So we have net income after tax. So net income after tax is the same as the profit after tax. So the balance is 1,162,000. And then we want to know how many shares are in issue by this company. So number of shares. So we're going to read additional information. So D talks about share capital and shares. So let us read here. Additional shares were issued on the 1st of May, 2021. So we are told that there were new shares that were issued 
during the year, and then we do not know the number of shares and the share price. Then the next, the second bullet here, on 30th of April 2022, that is the year end, shares were repurchased. So the value of the shares as per average issue price amounted to 25,000. The asking price was 10% more than the average price. Okay, so guys, this information does not give us, you know, what we want because we want to get the number of shares in issue. So now we have to find another way or another method that we can, you, you know, use to get what we want, which is the number of shares in issue. So in this uh, part, so part E of additional information, we are giving dividends and earnings per share for both 2021 and 2022. So we have interim shares and final. So now guys, you can make use of this information. So final dividend declared per share. So we know that at the end of the year, the final dividend per share declared by the company was 25 cents. And then we've got the amount here in the balance sheet. So the amount here, shareholders for dividends is 144. So guys, you can make use of this information to get the number of shares. How? So I will show you something. Maybe that will, uh, I believe this will really help you guys. Okay, so we are given the final dividend per share and then the final dividend amount. So we know the formula that, you know, to get final, get final dividend amount. To get final dividend amount. So guys, this is, um, you know, shoulders for dividends. So final dividend amount, I'm referring to shareholders uh you know i'm referring to this balance shareholders for dividends balance of 144 so this is the final dividend amount so that was declared on the 30th, uh, 30th of april 20x2 so now to get that amount we take the number of shares number of ordinary shares in issue at the end of the year and then we multiply this number of shares by uh, final dividend per share. Final dividend dividend per share. All right, so now guys, we're gonna sub in our amounts, our values here. So final dividend amount is given, so this amount is given uh, 844,000. So it's 144,000 shareholders for dividend. So guys, this is final dividend so i hope by now you you know you understand that so this is final dividend amount so final dividend amount is 144000 and then dividend per share is 25 cents so we've got two variables that we know and there is only one unknown so we can solve for the unknown so final dividend amount is 100 and 44,000 equals to, we do not know number of shares, but we do know final dividend per share. So final dividend per share is 0, 0,25, that is 25 cents. So guys, now we're going to make this uh, variable number of shares the subject of this expression. So that means we're going to divide by 0, 0,5 on the right hand side and what we do on the right hand side we must on the right hand side we must also apply on the uh left hand side so we're going to divide on both sides so let me put a uh, division line so i want this line to be straight so we are dividing So we divide by 0, 0,25 on both sides. Divide by 0, 0,25. So guys, this and that will cancel out. And then now we're going to be left with number of shares. So number of shares is equal to, so now 144 divided by 0, 0,25. 144,000 divided by 0, 0,25. So <laughs> this gives a total of 5 
seven six five seven six thousand so guys this is the number of shares in issue so the company had this uh they had these shares in issue at the end of the year and then per share they paid 25 cents so if you take 25 cents of this you will get the amount of 144 the one that is reflected in the statement of financial position so guys this is how we do it so i hope you understand everything here so now we have number of shares so we said the formula is given in the income statement extract so one million hundred and sixty two so now we're gonna sub in everything here profits is one million one hundred and sixty two thousand divided by we just calculated the number of shares and then we got five seven six triple zero So we are dividing, we're gonna put our division line here. Then multiply by 100. Now we're gonna punch this in the calculator. So we have a fraction, our numerator is 116200, divide by 57600, then multiply by 100. So guys, this we're gonna round it to one decimal. So this gives us 201,7 cents. So we're gonna write our answer on this side. So we are getting EPS 201.7 cents. As you always express this in cents. So it's 201,7 cents. So this is our EPS. And then by so doing, you get four marks. As you see, nothing is complicated here. So nothing is complicated. You just follow your formula and then make sure that you substitute correctly. If you do that, you will always get it right. And then the next part of required, that is um, 2.1.3. They want us to calculate dividend payout rate. So this is for three marks. So we are required to calculate dividend payout rate. So the formula, so let us first write the formula. So to get dividend payout rate, we use the formula DPS dividend per share divided by EPS and then multiply by 100. So dividend per share divided by EPS, which is earnings per share. So we already have EPS. So the one that we calculated in 2.1.2. .2. So DPS over EPS times 100. So guys, DPS is calculated using the formula. So I'll give you the formula to, you know, that you use to get DPS. So dividend per share, to get this, you take interim per share. Interim dividend per share and you add final dividend per share or another formula. So I'll show you two formulas. Or if you don't, or if this one is not applicable, you will use this one. So DPS equals to, so if you are given total dividend, we're gonna use this formula. Total dividends divided by number of shares in issue. So guys, it depends on the on how the information is given. If you are given the interim dividend per share and final dividend per share, you're gonna combine the two to get dividend per share. But if in the question you are given the total dividends amount, you're gonna take that total and divide by the number of shares. So there's an S there, number of shares. So now let us check how is our information presented here. So guys, here we have interim dividend per share and we have final dividend per share. 
meaning we're going to use the first formula. So we're going to combine 45 cents and 25 cents to get dividend per share. So 45 plus 25, this will give us DPS. So we're going to apply the first formula. So DPS plus two interim dividend per share is 45 cents. So it's 45 cents, comma, 45, plus final dividend is 25 cents. And we're going to add here. So we're going to add 0, 45 plus uh, 0, 25. So this gives us 0, 0,7. So if you multiply by 100, uh, it's gonna be 70 cents. So 0, 0,7, or you can say this is 70 cents. So you multiply, you simply multiply by 100 to get 70. But if you only add the two, 0, 0,45 and 0, 0,25, you'll get 0, 0,7. When you multiply by 100, it will give you 70 cents. And then, Back to our our formula. So here we are calculating the dividend uh, payout rates. So we know the formula DPS over EPS multiply by 100. Okay, so our DPS is 70 cents. So now we are substituting here. So our dividend per share is 70 cents. Divided by EPS, so earnings per share. So this one we calculated in 2.1.2. .2. So we got 201,7 cents. 201,7 cents. Then I will put the division line here. Because, guys, we want the percentage, we want the rate, we have to multiply by 100. So we're going to multiply by 100 because we want the percentage. So 70 cents divided by 201,7 cents times 100. So I'm getting 34,7%. So we're going to write our answer in this column. So 30. 4,7%. So this is the correct answer for dividend payout. So now if you take 100 and you multiply, by, you, you, uh, you subtract, if you take 100 and subtract 34,7, you will get what we call the retention rate. So the amount of profit that is kept aside, that is retained. So it will be 62,6. That will be the retention rate. But you, you know, you don't need to stress about that. So the only thing that they wanted here is dividend payout rate, which is 34,7%. So now we have uh, gotten this max, three max. And then the last one. The last one. So that is 2.1.4. They want us to calculate percentage return on average equity. That is Russia. Guys, this is for five max. So the formula to get Russia. So the formula for Russia is so guys every time when you are required to calculate return so return is another term for profit so all the ratios that have the term of or that uses the term of return you must know that they are referring to the profit so if they say calculate return on average shoulders equity so it means the formula is the profit so the return is the profit so you take profit after tax it's after tax then you divide this by the average shareholders equity. So because it's a percentage that we are calculating here, we're gonna multiply by 100. So let me put the division line.
Okay, so profit of the tax divided by average shareholders equity times 100. So this will give us the percentage return on average shareholders equity. So we have the profits. So this is taken from the income statement extract. So the profits is given in the income statement extract. So net income after tax is 1,162,000. 1,162,000. Divide by guys to get the average shareholders' equity, you take the equity balance of the previous period and you add the equity shareholders' equity balance of the current period, and then you divide by two. That's how you get the average. So, shareholders' equity for the previous period is 8,893. So, you can say this is the opening balance. So, opening plus closing balance divided by two. So, you take the balance for 2021 and you take the balance for 2022, you divide by two. That's how you get the average okay so we're gonna add eight million eight hundred and ninety three eight hundred and ten million seven hundred and seventy six four hundred divided by two so twenty twenty one balance shoulders equity balance is eight million eight hundred and ninety three thousand eight hundred plus the shareholders equity balance for twenty twenty two is ten million seven hundred and seventy six four hundred Okay, let us put these two in bracket and then we're going to divide them by two so that we get the average. So here we have our division line. Okay, guys, we want to end the full marks here, five out of five. So we have to show all the steps. So now we have 1,162,000. Divide by, so we're going to punch this, so we need to get the average. So to get the average, we take 8,893,800 8, plus 10,773,400 seven, 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 Close the bracket and divide by 2. So this will give us the average. So the average is 9,810,35,100. So 9,810,35,100. So this is our average. So guys, take note of how the average is calculated. You take the previous year's equity balance, you combine that with the current year's equity balance, and then you divide by two. So that is how you get the average shareholders' equity, 9,810,35,100. Then we put the division line, because we are dividing here. So don't forget to multiply by 100, because we want a percentage. That is why we are multiplying by 100. So now we want the final answer. So now we press the fraction button, 1,162,000 divided by 9,835,100 multiplied by 100. So we're going to round it to the, we're going to round it to one decimal. So this would be 11,8%. So the answer is 11,8%. Then we have five marks. So that's how you get all these marks. So guys, we are done. So I hope now you will not struggle to calculate these indicators, financial indicators. So number one, we calculated the debt equity ratio. Number two, we calculated EPS. Number three, we calculated dividend payout rate. And then number four, we calculated percentage return on average shareholders equity. Thank you. Goodbye.